All right, this is my most ambitious video yet, but before I begin, I definitely wanna give some shout outs because I always feel bad after the videos for the people I didn't mention. And so in particular today, of course, I want to mention Greg Woodcock for allowing me to borrow his 3D imager. That's been really quite a journey, learning how to use this thing. And also, I just wanna share with you guys all the things I've learned. And uh, it's pretty exciting. Uh, exciting stuff, stuff I didn't know and stuff that I'm pretty sure the community doesn't know about either. Uh, we'll talk about that. Stephen Cray, I definitely want to thank him. He's uh, reached out to me. He is willing to help me develop a sweet overlay for the Alpine Rescue. And uh, as you know, a good overlay can make a world of difference, and Mr. Cray makes some of the very best. I'm so excited about that. Uh, Alan McClellan, uh, he was snowed in this last weekend, and he recorded some of the Vectrex videos uh, that you'll be seeing shortly. It was a last-minute request for me. And he got the job done. And he's just been a great support along the way, too. So thank you, Alan. Uh, Malbin, if you're even listening, uh, man, I mean, you know, where would we be without Malbin and his tools, his documented snippets of code? Um, I think a lot of us owe our start to Malbin. And um, I'd still be stuck coding in Notepad++ without a clue of how hard I was working that 6809 processor. Hats off to Malban and the continued work he does. Uh, definitely want to get involved in supporting his pie tracks as well. So awesome. Keep up the great work, Malban. There's so many others, especially in the Facebook Vectrex Fans Unite group. You are all an awesome community, and I really appreciate all the feedback, and you're testing my demos. And without further ado, let's jump into today's video. If you thought the Vectrex had to rely on overlays to create brilliant color, stay tuned because we're about to look at how you can program the intensity and timing of individual vectors to pull off true 48-bit color without relying on a static overlay. But first, we're going to look at the original overlays. The new black light UV overlays. We'll take a look at and through the 3D imager and spend some time comparing the color palette of retro gaming consoles from the Atari to PlayStation 1. Then we're going to look at how we can use math and programming on the Vectrex to knock their collective socks off. So how many colors can you do on a Vectrex? Well, this image gives you a clue. But let's start by looking at the original overlays. Ah, the original overlay. It's a sheet of plastic. It's colored. You lay it over top of the screen, and it turns those brilliant white vectors into shades of green or blue, red, uh, or in the case of Stephen Cray's overlays, uh, psychedelic colors, if you'd like. The only issue with them, of course, is that as, as enemies or as your character moves from one area in the overlay to another, it changes color. So if you want to have a consistent color like you want to always be the same, just like right now, when you take it off, they're all white. Wouldn't it be great if your vectors stayed their color? And that's what we're trying to get at with what I'm going to be showing shortly. At any rate, overlays are awesome. They really bring a lot to the game. UV overlays. These are the awesome ones that are being made that work with a black light LEDs that go around the frame. Just look great. And this is my Alpine Rescue demo that I had Alan McClellan record over the weekend. And I really appreciate him doing that. Look how awesome that looks. It's great, right? It really adds a sense of depth and stuff. And, and I'm looking forward to. Uh, pursuing those possibilities as well. But again, things change color as they leave the zone. And here's the 3D imager that I'm borrowing from Greg Woodcock. So basically with that, you know, it's very comfortable. It's got adjustable straps. It fits my wife, my son. Uh, it's great. I really enjoy using it. There's only three games really that came out, or maybe four games that came out originally for the imager. And it uses this colored disc. And I was hoping to make my Alpine Rescue game work with a 3D imager. And as you know, it does binocular vision. So you have your left eye and your right eye and the spinning disc spins. And when one eye is covered and the other eye is uncovered every 60th of a second. And right here, you can see through the green eye hole that it, it turns things for that split second green for that eye. And then it spins around to the other side. And I can't really demonstrate the 3D necessarily, but I will show some video capture that I've got so you can at least see the colors it makes. Here's a collar wheel that comes inside of it. This is the one for Mind, Mindstorm. They all come in blue, red, and green. And it didn't hit me until later that if you reverse that, that's red, green, blue, right? It's RGB. And that's where the magic comes in. So we'll get to that. But right now you're looking through it. The disc is spinning. And you can see through both eyes. Uh, the camera does an okay job of picking it up. Looking through the small rectangles, you can see it's red on the right right now, like reddish pink. And then um, now it's green. Those are green and there's blue. So I have blue, green, red. And this is the demo that I made and released to the uh, Facebook group. Uh, just 
learning how to program in 3D. So it's very interesting. It's really different. So you can see how the lines make like X's there, those tall X's. And when I lift the imager up, they become a single line because you're seeing your left eye and your right eye combined. With your binocular vision, it's really amazing. Those lines really stick out through the screen towards you, and it's pretty great. So uh, this is, I uh, sort of was trying to make something that looked like Beam Rider a little bit, and I um, was pretty happy with how it turned out. It's really got some nice depth to it. So uh, we'll be demoing that at the end of the video. So at the end of the video, I'm going to show you all the 3D stuff that I've made on this demo, 3D demo, that I've released to the Facebook group. Because, let's face it, almost nobody has a 3D imager and um, be able to experience what it's like. But we're talking about color. We're talking about all the colors that are possible. And I'm telling you, you can do all those colors you just saw. I'm going to show you how right now. But we're going to have to get a little bit into the math on this, okay? And this is exciting. So don't be scared of all these numbers you're about to see. But this is the spreadsheet I put up on the Facebook group as well, because I was trying to explore how many colors we can make with that 3D imager. Because with the 3D imager, as you saw, I can program an individual vector to be any of these basic colors. Now, these are the basic colors. These are very easy to trigger and use because there's a subroutine. There's five general intensity levels. All you programmers that are starting to work on Vetrex, you're dealing with, at the beginning, these primary intensity levels. And then basically I went through, and so over here you have the RGB value. So I just want to map it out so I can test and see if my numbers were working correctly and if the code was working right. So that's why all these numbers are here. And let me tell you, it is working. And that's why I made the demo so you could see it as well. Basically, we have the right eye. It tells you what memory. Uh, that memory location is the, the function you'll call if you want to set to that intensity level. If you want to set the left eye green intensity level or the right eye green intensity level, to 75%, you would use that. And what I did is I just went through, and so I just went through the basic intensity levels that you get right off the bat by using those memory calls. So you can very easily say I wanna go zero blue, 64 blue, 128 blue, 192, and 255. And so starting at 64, and then 128, and then as I loop through it, I go up to 255, and then we go to the reds. 64, 128, 192, 255, that's the RGB values that we're hitting. And when you get 255s across the board, bingo, you've got white. Pretty neat. We have 125, 125 collars. And I had to have my son come and help me out. He's taking algebra and things, so he can help me figure out exactly why I ended up with 125. I just wrote them all down, and he explained to me how it works. Basically, you have five intensity levels for blue, green, and red. And if you just go across with those five intensity levels, and you... You just multiply them 5 times 5 times 5. You say, that's not right. It should just be 5 times 3. But no, you could have a little bit of blue and a little bit of green and no red. Or you could have some red. Or you could have, you can mix it up different ways. Uh, you could have all red and no blue or green. And you get these different shades. Gives you 125 possible colors as we saw right here. Pretty neat because you're going to be amazed by how many colors. If you thought that was a lot of colors to do, I mean, you can program a vector. So I want the trunk of the tree to be brown, or I want the sky to be blue, or I want the tops of the mountains to be white. I thought I would have to make a white color band on the 3D imager color wheel. But when it hit me that this was RGB colors spinning, then now suddenly the world opened up and I could easily make white. More than that, we have left eye, right eye, green, and blue, and red. And you can set those basic intensities for that. So already you start to see, when you multiply that, you're talking about 5 to the 6th power, right? That's how many possibilities you have. How many colors is that? 5 to the 6th power, just with the basic intensities. So we have a little bit of left eye blue, a little bit of right eye green, left eye green, some right eye red, or we just go green. Um, when you blend those colors together, you get a total of 15,625 colors. Now, of course, I didn't graph all those out on the spreadsheet yet. <laughs> if I'm really bored someday, maybe I will. When you, when you mix colors with a crayon, as we've all done in the past, you end up, if you mix all the colors together, you're going to get like a muddy brown, right? But with light, it's additive. And if anybody like who works with Photoshop or whatever, you know RGB colors, you know, zero RGB is black, full 255 RGB, you've got blazing white, right? And everything in between. But here's the crazy thing, right? I'm talking about five intensity values 
from 25, 50, 75 percent to 100 percent, and a zero percent. That's your five values. There's way more. There are 127 intensity values for each eye, for each color setting. And you can totally hit all these intensity values from zero to 127. So, left eye blue from zero to 127, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you can set whatever is in the A register. You can set the intensity to that. So the A register, it's an 8-bit register. It gives you 127 values you can use. And you can plug in those values into each one of these slots for a total of 128 to the 6th power, which is, yes, 4 trillion, that is trillion, 4 trillion, 398 billion, 46 million, 511,000, 104 possible Collars. How is that even possible? Well, let's go to the collar picker. It's here on Google. You can do this yourself. I was trying to capture it in other ways, but this is the best one. Here's the RGB values in the bottom left. See that? RGB values. We're going to start with blue. Blue. So RGB of 64. That's our 64 intensity. That's our 25% intensity. Go to zero, it's black. As we crawl up through the intensities, you can see the blues getting lighter. We're adding light to it. We're adding more blue, and it's additive. It's getting brighter, more bold, until you get to 255, which is basically the same as saying 100% left eye blue, 100% right eye blue. Now, how do we get to these lighter colors? We simply just increase the percentage of the reds and greens for both eyes, and you can head up to this nice periwinkle blue, right? It's a 191 red and green and still 255 blue, you've added light to it. You're brightening things up. That's all you're doing. And you can go through the hues, all the different hues. As you go through the greens, you increase the greens. And now we're more in this, like, chartreuse, I don't know, yellowish color, right? All these colors are available to you as a Vectrex programmer. You can program an individual vector to be this color if you're using an RGB 3D imager. Seriously, your, only ha your imager disk has red, green, and blue, but you have every single color you see in this color picker. Every single shade, every single color. It's more than you get at Sherwin-Williams, right? This is amazing to me. I can get any color I want. I mean, some of the hardest colors to get to. Um, brown is a really hard color. Uh, let's see, go the other way. So brown, brown is really hard. Uh, to, to get right. Skin tones, right? You can get any skin tone you want <laughs> if you want it. I was looking for brown for the tree trunk uh, of my trees in Alpine Rescue. And I did something in this. I, I made it more bright. It's more of an orangey brown, actually. And brown for the cabin. Scratch that. Actually, I didn't use the tree trunks. But I did make the cabin brown. Orangey brown. All these colors are possible with the Vectrex 3D Imager. Or just a spinning disc of red, green, and blue. There was some stuff on Facebook I saw some of you guys had put together just a spinning color wheel of red, green, and blue. And you were able to, without a 3D imager, make colors. And um, that's all you need. Just sync up a, a motor with the red, green, and blue and then set the intensities levels. And you can get these beautiful shades of gold and brown. And it's amazing. And it's exciting. Before I show you what it looks like in the Vectrex, let's look at what else was happening in 1982. The Atari 2600. It had a 128 color palette. I didn't realize that. That's a lot of colors. The resolution kind of was low, <laughs> you know. You're dealing with blocky stuff. But man, look at those colors. Of course, they're extra blendy because they're on a CRT TV. Don't get me started on how amazing CRT TVs are. I can talk for days. The Tandy 1000 EGA, it's called TGA Graphics actually, I should not have wrote EGA. This game came out in 89, The Prince of Persia. Had some rotoscoped animation, this is filmed off of my, my actual monitor there, my RGB monitor. TGA Graphics, 16 color. The resolution's definitely taken an increase, you've got animations because you have more memory storage. Look great. The Nintendo NES, where a lot of us are familiar with it, it only had 56 colors. 
Um, we forget about that sometimes. Games like Mega Man uh, would actually lay sprites over top of each other. So like Mega Man's face, uh, because you can only have so many colors at a time, right, for a sprite. So they would put two sprites over. So Mega Man's helmet is made of two sprites, actually. There's a bluish one and overlaying the skin color one. Uh, but you've got great effects with that. Now your resolution has taken a, a good bump up. You got some big, uh, big sprites. Well, sprites put together to make things like this giant penguin. Look at those beautiful colors. Love me some Eggman. Sega Master System. Um, 64 colors. Not as much as you might think. Uh, it could do 64 all at once. They couldn't really expand things much. This is what you get. I mean, this is your skin color, your skin tones on a Sega Master System. It didn't look bad on a CRT TV. I, I kind of videotaped a little bit bluish color there on mine. This is all, all these videos come from my equipment. I do uh, collect only the things that I'm really nostalgic for that I played as a kid. So, um, played a lot of black belt at my friend's house. Otherwise known as Fist of the North Star. <laughs> but got rebranded somehow, they didn't get the rights to it. Sega Genesis, that was the next step up. 512 color palette. You could do 1500 color, similar to what we were talking about with the Vectrex, with shading and things like that, with intensity levels and shadows. Uh, you get these kind of looks. They did a lot of dithering. Um, and, and a lot of the Sega stuff looks best on, again, a CRT TV. Just research things like the Waterfall and Sonic. Let's just take a moment to appreciate Skate's awesome moves. Super Nintendo, really pay attention to how those mountains fade out as the snowstorm rolls in. The mountains in the background, just kind of keep an eye on those. Donkey Kong Country, they used um, several tricks to get extra colors. I've heard they've used some um, scan line tricks too on CRT TVs to get 4,000 colors. But you had a lot of layering. Like you could have like uh, multiple layers. Like think of the fog in Legend of Zelda a Link to the Past. You know, those, uh, the fog and the lost woods, whatever. It was added extra colors. And here you have snow kind of over top. Not only transparent snow, but some layers were transparent. PlayStation 1, 32-bit system, 24-bit color palette, though. 16 million colors. Already you're seeing definitely much better skin tone. And um, it's just amazing pixel work. Love this game. One of my favorites. Have you gotten over 200% completion? I sure have. So off to the Vectrex. So here's what I developed as I was trying to learn how to use the 3D imager. First of all, it's just like me learning how to do the color. So this is red, green, and blue, and they have different distances. The reason there's kind of wiggling to it, because when you look at it through the imager, those little tripod shapes going up and down, they look still. It looks like a little, uh, think of like a folded paper clip with like a tripod kind of like pointing towards you. It's pretty great. I can't explain it. You just have to see it. I kind of made that design based off of the uh, Mindstorm 3D enemies. Those are so amazing. They're like little tripods. And it, anyway, they're great. The second thing I wanted to do once I got this color thing figured out was see if it really worked. So I had to make a color mixer. So here you have your left eye. And you can see like we got like this goldish color right now uh, with these settings. The little octagon that's sort of spinning looking. Um, 
the 3D octagon, it is gold. That's because the blues are down at 25%, and the green and red, both eyes, are at 50%. If I raise the blues up, the blue right eye goes up to around 75%, and the blue left eye goes up to 75%, roughly. I didn't let them go to 100% because I'm just afraid of making the vectors too bright. I don't know if there's an issue with that, so I just played it safe on this version. This is my latest version that I haven't posted on Facebook uh, Vectrex fans group yet, but I will. Purples, by doing the greens down, the reds up, you get more purple color, right? Just like that color picker we did on Google. And you just kind of move your joystick. If you're, if you're playing around with the demo, just move your joystick left and right to select the different color values. Raising the green left eye, raising the red left eye, and raising the right uh, green right eye, sorry, um, you get that brilliant white. And it was really bright. It's so bright, I just I was afraid to go any brighter. Sometimes with assembly code, you can go a little bit too much power <laughs> for Vectrex. So I just try to play it safe. Let's bring all the colors on the right eye down and let my camera adjust. And now you can see that we have a grayish color. And you bring your red down, bring down the green, left green. And now as we bring down the left blue, you're going to get just go to black or fade out completely. Uh, my camera's having a hard time picking this up. So there, there's just your plain blue. Um, that's kind of what you get. And I was just super excited. That whole gamut of colors I could recreate. Here's Alpine Rescue, uh, the game I'm working on. I, I've got to bring it over to 3D. Eventually, I'd like to do that. Here's what I, my first test. I've got a purple door. Um, there's the lighting correct now. And then we got uh, brown, sort of, on the cabin. White roofs. Again, folks, this is just a red, green, and blue disc. There's no white color on here. There's no purple color, no yellow color. I'm able to make these colors by mixing, and you can really, really control it. It's not hard to control your colors. Um, you can use a little spreadsheet I made. Pretty soon, once you see how the pattern goes, you can do it just out of your head, and that's where I'm at. Thankfully, now I can just, you know, if I want to make yellow or purple, I know the values to put in. And here's another part of the demo that I made. This is really kind of for me to help me calibrate things, but this is sort of like Beam Writer. I thought I'd make it like the futuristic grid, because that's what everyone wants to make, the 1980s, you know, futuristic grid, just like Beam Rider uh, for the Atari and so forth, and Commodore, etc. But it turns out those grid lines, I had a hard time making them look right. So, but when you do vertical without any horizontal lines, man, it really pops out. It's amazing. And um, it looks great. You have to take my word for it, but basically everything you're seeing double of becomes one, so those X's become lines that look like they physically go into your screen. And they look like they physically come out of your screen. It looks so much like they're coming out of your screen that you sort of take it for granted, but if you actually reach out with your finger to touch the point of the line, your finger has to go an extra two inches past where you think it should touch the line at. When you're expecting to touch the screen, you go another two inches because it looks like it's coming out of the screen that far. And um, if I spread things out further, like this is like basically 20, say, units apart. If I go further apart, I have a hard time with that. I'm going to definitely talk about lessons I've learned with 3D on my next video. That one will hopefully be a quicker video. I'm going to talk about other 3Ds. And, and the colors will mess up here because I'm, I'm doing the colors in post and I don't have the time to go back and mask it correctly. But basically, here's what you would see. You see turquoise, the turquoise enemies, and you see... Um, Without the 3D imager, it's black and white. So, but this is what it looks like without the 3D imager. But I'm controlling these white lines to become color, and you can too. And I'll try to document it more. I'm going to try to start a uh, blog at some point. So stay tuned. A lot of exciting things to come. Make sure you subscribe or share this video. If uh, you're ever getting a heated argument with someone who's a retro gamer and says that their systems are the best with color, We'll say, well, actually, <laughs> the Vectrex can do some amazing stuff. So I know you are all fans. I'm preaching to the choir, but yeah, it's exciting stuff. Stay tuned, subscribe, and look forward to more videos and sharing more with you. Thanks for all your support and encouragement. You guys have an awesome week. Catch you later.